Good morning. Good morning. And happy Honors Day to our Sunday School and everyone else who, everybody here who helps all year long by actually being here and praising God, singing, ushering, and just serving in all different areas. We wouldn't be able to have a church without every single one of you. The flowers on the altar are given by the Menino family in honor and celebration of Honors Day, Father's Day, Christopher's high school graduation, and Lee Norman's 85th birthday. Now oh, that's wonderful, isn't it? And happy birthday for all the fathers here. And I'm gonna say fathers this way, because there are men in our lives that might not be our fathers, but that have helped us our whole life. I know me, I, there's so many trustees over the years and people that have helped me through life, including my brothers. And so we celebrate all the men in the church today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, before I start, um, I have some sad news um, that Sean um, June Willis' son-in-law went home to be with the Lord yesterday. And so please pray for June and Holly and the rest of the family because he was quite young and it was quite a surprise. So please, um, we ask that you know, during prayer time, lift them up and be thinking of them. Now I invite you to join me in the call to worship. In all times, in all places, God is with us. Shout for joy. Sing praises to God. Get ready to become disciples for Jesus. Lord, make us ready to serve And now I invite you to watch and listen to our praise and worship video. Amen. Before we do our praise and sharing, I'd like to praise people for birthdays today and anniversaries. Um, Daniel Haig, 616. Azaria Shokoda, 617. Twyla Hunter, happy birthday. Happy birthday. 621. Make sure you remind her. I'm sure she'd appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Rigg, 621. Lois Risboli, 621, and make sure we send her a card. How old would she be? 90 something. But she's amazing, and everybody's amazing, though. Um, Wesley Battle Jr., 622. And happy anniversary to Daryl and Lynn. And Lynn Lindholm, 618. Do you care to share how many years it is, Miss Daryl? 64. 64, wow. <laughs> And we have Susan and Albert Closey, 621, and Linda and Peter Hornis, 622, and we're going to ask you how many years? Linda, how about you? Because Peter... 39. 39, wow. 39 years old. Wow. We'll have to have a party. That's wonderful. And I didn't say the announcements, but... I spoke to some people and we have a picnic after church and some people didn't know and if you're not getting the MailChimp, can you speak to me or Miss Debbie? So we make sure, so please um, stay after. We have a picnic and we have uh, uh, Doug and his son are going to be barbecuing for us today. And also we have Vacation Bible School coming up and either for you, your children, neighbors, grandchildren, please remember that. And so now I invite you to continue in our time of praise sharing. What are we thankful for today? <laughs> no, it's me. No. Oh, good, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, isn't this wonderful? We have youth on the altar. We actually had youth acolyting. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a very happy woman. Thank you, God. <laughs> and. Uh, I'm glad you're all here for our honors day. And we'll have youth um, doing some music later too, yes. so well, yes. wonderful. Yeah. So yes, good morning. I just wanted to share, um, last week we had a wonderful opportunity to go on a cruise, which was lovely. God's world is certainly beautiful. 
Um, but while we were away and at dinner one evening, uh, Gail and John got a call that a tree had fallen almost on Matthew um, at home. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how do you get off of a ship really fast? You know? <laughs> Fortunately, Lisa, uh, Stephanie and Joe had heard a crack before it fell and yelled at him across and said, move, move, Matt. And the tree came down and he came walking out from under the branches. So I'm just so thankful to God that he was okay. And, and, um, and I'm thankful that Stephanie and Joe both recognize that that's God. Amen. That is God, an amazing opportunity. I want to play from a Rosa. <laughs> um, good morning. Dom and I are ecstatic to announce that our daughter gave birth on Wednesday to little Stella. So you thank you the world. Everyone's doing great. Yesterday, I had the best day of my life. Me, my great grandma, my grandma, my whole family went to a water park and we had a lot of fun. They were celebrating a day there. I don't know where. I, I don't know what they were doing, but they had a bouncy castle for the whole plate. It was for the whole school that they were having. I was able to join. I had the best time of my life. I was able to spend time with my baby cousin. I prayed to the Lord that it, my baby cousin would actually sleep. She hadn't took a nap that day, but thankfully she did. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, thank you. I just want to share how I found out about the picnic yesterday, or Friday. I called the pastor to let her know I took her advice as far as getting uh, the people to help me with Donald, my son Donald's situation. And uh, praise God, he's getting mighty strong with his mouth, tells me don't dictate to him, but he's got to realize I'll always be there for him. I am very pleased to announce that my Granddaughter Leah is turning eight on the 21st. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Jane Rosa, and I just I am very thankful for this church body that has. Uh, been supportive of Jatasia and and Nana and JD all these years. I just love love your hearts. Love your hearts that you um, just stepped up. And thank you, thankful for Lisa and all that she does. But just thankful to Jesus that He gives us families to be a part of. Amen. Amen. All right, well, aren't you all happy to be alive today? Yes. And it's not raining? Yes. yes. And it's nice weather, but we're going to praise God for the heat, too, because we're going to be waking up and enjoying the summer. So that is wonderful. Well, now, if there are no other announcements, please join me in the opening prayer. God of abundant love, we come to you this day in the midst of a season of great growth, all around us are signs in our earth, in our families, in our nation, in the world. We come this day seeking your healing love and abounding mercy. Open your hearts to receive all that you offer, that we may become fruitful. And now I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing together our opening hymn, We Are the Church, number 558 in the hymnals or on the screen.
confession and then take some time for a silent confession and profession to the Lord. Patient Lord, we know how we are. We let the frustrations and worries of our lives overcome us. Our hearts seem to buckle under the weight of anger and confusion. Our our strife. How foolish we are. How faithless we are. Please forgive us. Help us to learn that you are actively involved in our lives, not as a puppet master, but as a creative seeking healing not only for us, but for the whole world. Make us into disciples of peace and compassion. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news. Let go of your fears and doubts. God pours God's love on you, in you, and through you to others. Be at peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Psalm 20. Sorry. There we go. Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May we shout for, oh, sorry. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of Lord our God. They brought us to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king, answer us when we call. Uh, 2 Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the, in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died, and he died for all, so that those who might live, live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone, isn't in, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Great job. Didn't they do a wonderful job?
And now we have a special song from our Sunday school. The elementary class has been practicing signing, Jesus Loves Me. If the congregation could help, if the congregation could help and sing the first verse of Jesus Loves Me twice, they'll go through their signs so that they can show you the signs. But they would love for you to sing. And we have wonderful, we have a guest pianist, <laughs> and Dylan will be playing for us. Thank you, Dylan. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Great job. Maybe you can teach that to me. I only know part of it. And now I invite you to stand as you're able for the gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson this morning is Mark 4, verses 26. Mark 4 verses 26 through 34. He also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day. And the seed would sprout and grow, but it does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. And when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nest in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for for our wonderful church family, our young people, but especially, Lord, we thank you 
for faith and how you have taught us how to trust you. Be with us in these few minutes as we think about having a mustard seed faith and what it means to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Boys and girls, I understand that you study the mustard seed in Sunday school. That's what Miss Kathy said, did you? Did you learn anything like that you remember? You do? What? It's a tiny seed, that's right. And you know what? I have special earrings on today. They're tiny mustard seed earrings, and I have a mustard seed bracelet too, so I'll show you later. But they're so small, the tiny seeds, and this is for everyone. And I always liked that story, and I always wanted to find things like that, because when I was in Sunday school, I always had a Sunday school teacher. Didn't some of you? She had a tiny, or it was, it was a she, a little mustard seed necklace. But a long time ago, I was in France on a mission trip, and we started in Germany, and we had to ride all the way across France, and I remember seeing um, fields and fields of orange flowers, and I said, oh, marigolds, what, goldenrod? And they said, no, that's mustard. And, um, and when I think about mustard, it's so small, yet it makes these fields and fields. And it's really an amazing thing. And when we think about faith, and, and we're told that we should have the faith of a mustard seed. And that's kind of hard, isn't it? But it means that really God, it, God just asks us to trust him. And there are five verses I found in the Bible, in the Gospels, that mention mustard seed. First, Matthew 17, 20. And he said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, I, truly I say to you, to have the faith the size of a mustard seed. If you say to this mountain, move from here to there, it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. And then in Luke 17, we hear, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Then there was another one that we, I just read to you, that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, and there's one more in there that says the same thing. So when we think about that, that's hard, isn't it? Sometimes we think if we have a little bit of faith, it's not enough. But God shows us through his word and through life that he never leaves us or forsake us. And briefly in this parable today, first Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is like someone would scatter seed and it would, would rise one day and sprout and you don't know how it happens. And you know that the redwood trees, you've heard of the redwood trees, so big trees, apparently their seeds are the size of a tomato seed. And aren't you amazed sometimes when um, something grows and you, you prune it and it grows? Well, it's kind of the mystery of the world because God is a God of power. And so the God, the kingdom of God is in our midst every day. God assures us of that. And then the parable of the mustard seed today, it is more mystery. And he's talking about God is just an amazing God. And he takes this small thing and can change things. Perhaps in some ways he's talking about Jesus himself. Because Jesus was not the Messiah that people expected. They expected a king and a warrior, a righteous king, not a carpenter's child. Yet he changed the world. In John 12, 24, we hear, and Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And like for Piper and Leah, their um, grandpa is a farmer. And so, and when um, your Aunt Robin, when they put things in the ground, you know, it just doesn't come up out of, it, it, all of a sudden things start to grow, right? Isn't that kind of amazing? So that's what God's telling us about. But it's also for you young people, even you, JD, the message is for you too, that even though you're a little person now, God can do many mighty things through you. And he can do mighty things through everyone seated here, no matter how old we are, no matter how young we are. When we trust God, God changes our life and we just need a little bit of faith and we need each other as we go through life. Our God is amazing. Isn't God amazing? As we heard um, 
We heard Mrs. Butcher share with us about the miracle, what happened, and God never leaves us alone. So one of my favorite verses is what we heard Logan read to us before. So we walk by faith, not by sight. So when we take that little bitty bit of faith that we can walk by faith and not by sight, God's ways are not our ways. And Isaiah 55, 80 tells us that. And also God is above us. And no matter what we're dealing with, no matter if we're having a bad day, if we're aching, if we're not feeling well, if we're just sad, God reminds us in Hebrews 13, 5, he will never leave us or forsake us. He is always with us. So as we think of our faith journey, some of us who are a little more seasoned, and all you too, all you little people, as you're learning and you're gonna get Bibles and you learned all year, that remember that God is continuing to do great things through all of you. Don't you think that's awesome? Would, would you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for all that you teach us and help us to have faith and and Lord, um, remind us that even when we're going through challenges, remind us that you walk with us and that no matter how we go through life, that you will use us and can transform this world into a better place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now as we just reflect on who God is and who God wants us to be, let us sing Sanctuary. You may remain seated, and you may sing this twice. That is the faith we sing, 2164. concern you wish lifted up, I invite you to either stand in your place, um, Peter has the microphone, or also if you have filled out a prayer card, um, hand it to Debbie, our usher, and she will bring it up to me. We're going to pray and talk to Jesus so Jesus can't hear. Well, you yeah, can't always hear, but it'll help him if you're not talking. <laughs> okay. Let us pray. And can you boys and girls close your eyes, fold your hands. Piper, you too. Bow your head. Good job. Okay, let us pray. Gracious and heavenly God, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the joy of our beautiful children who are here, just so full of love and, and wonderfulness, and continue to bless them and their families. Bless our children who aren't here today, and may you continue to work through them. Thank you for their teachers and, and the love in which they share with, with everyone. And yes, every child, Lord, is so precious, Lord, and um, every family. We thank you for our choir and our ushers and our acolytes and our sound people and every single person here as they come to you, giving of themselves through prayer and just so many things. And Lord, we ask for your um, Holy Spirit to be with us and, and bless each member of our congregation. 
Lord, we pray for, for June Willis and her family at the time of their profound loss. Lord, we pray that they will be with them as they um, have gone through the grief of losing Sean. Please be with Holly and the rest of the family. Lord, we ask for prayers for Pastor Dan, whose mother um, passed away this week, and, and continue to be continue to be with with him, and be with all who continue to grieve losses, and all who are not feeling well today. Lord, you know those in our our church family who who need your healing touch. We continue to we praise God that um, Jean is doing better and will be receiving um, her transfusion this week. Continue to be with Fran and so many others, Lord. We leave no one out, Lord. Just bless each and every one of our church members and our friends and our families. Lord, we also lift up the people in the world who need your healing touch. Lord, there's so many wars and rumors of wars. Lord, that we ask that you will truly just bring peace to our world. Thank you, Lord, though, especially for loving each one of us. Continue to walk with us and help us to follow you. And now let us pray the prayer that the Lord himself taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite Kathy Casey forward. This job is done by many, many people. Um, first of all, happy Honors Day, happy Father's Day, and uh, and we really love your kids, your grandkids, people that come that are shorter than us. We love them all. Um, so if the elementary school kids could come, p teachers could come up. So that would be Teresa and Lisa Grace and Kathy Schiavi. And, and Sarah, I don't know if you're online, Sarah, um, when, she's, when she's not infirmed, she's a big help to us, right? Um, oh, Sarah kind of brought us, I had told you last year that Sarah brought us Godly Play. Godly Play is a curriculum that we've been using in the elementary school that is um, multi-sensory and really appeals to our kids. Uh, and we, it's, it's a lot of work for the teachers, but uh, it, I, we all see the kids' response, so we all put in the work. So, does anybody want to say anything else? Okay, we, we've kind of lost track of who got Bibles and who didn't through the pandemic. So we are sort of passing Bibles out to people because of course the kids say, oh no, I never got a Bible. But, <laughs> Never hurts to have more than one. And Pastor Sandy has one that she really likes for this age group. And so we know we're giving them a different Bible than we gave them the last time. So um, if, the, if the kids could come forward, all of them. JD, JD, get up. Come on, all of you come up, all of my. So um, let's see. So we call, call them up. We, can, we should do a family picture. I like that. Lisa, come do a family picture. <laughs> We're missing several of our youth um, that, oh, I don't need to be in that. Real quick, real quick. Doesn't this remind you of some of those holidays? 
holidays that we all have. <laughs> Thank you for that intermission. Um, uh, the, so we do have several kids that aren't here today. We're okay, that, um, that would also be receiving Bibles. We give them out when they go into third grade, so there's really only one today that's not getting a Bible, I think. Okay. Oh, and Charles. No, I don't think so. Charles, what grade are you going into? Yeah, so not Charles. Sorry, Charles. Okay, so. Jamie. Xavier. If you go up into the room we use, there's a lot of, we have outside chalk, we have Legos, we have puppets, we have, we have a lot of things. And after we do the lesson, which is acted out with little pieces and, or um, pictures and things, then they can pick one of those things. And the object is to reenact something about the story, either with the Legos or with drawing or with the puppets. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't on occasion get out of hand, but, most, <laughs> but <laughs> I do have to say that most of the time it is, it is um, at least entertaining, but I think it really does uh, encourage them to, to think through the lesson after we've gone through a parable or, or something like that. Anybody has any questions about Godly Play, please feel free to ask any of the one, any of us. Um, we'll gladly go into further detail. So, uh, so now I'm gonna call the middle, you, you guys want to sit, I call, I'll call Russ, and Doug, and Corey and Lisa. And, and Peter, because he fills in very frequently. So Peter, come forward too. So the, these are the high school, the ones that, that work with the middle school, high school kids. You know, pre-pandemic, we had four classes. We, we still haven't gotten past the two. So we have the elementary kids, which go to fifth, and then from sixth to um, high school, they, they all go to this class. Their class is uh, more of a discussion, usually related to the gospel lesson of that lectionary reading that day. And they have conversations with the kids about how that applies to their lives every day. It's a, it's a very contemporary conversation, um, right? Yes. Am I speaking out of turn? No. Should I have let one of you say this? Okay, good. So, <laughs> are there any high school kids you'd like to call up? Sure. Okay, all of them. Oh, middle school, high school. Yeah. Uh, so this year we had uh, some pretty regular attendance due to confirmation. So as you know, we had Logan Reynolds uh, confirmed this year. Uh, we had James Horton uh, confirmed this year and Leo Gutowski neither of which are here today. So James is working at the back. And oh, James is hiding, yeah. So, and yes, so then uh, we also had some guest speakers and in the past several weeks we've been joined by Christopher Menino. It's been lovely to have you. Uh, we have often had Wesley and Carly Battle. Uh, we've been graced with the presence of uh, Hope on occasion, who is so bright and contributes to such intellectual conversation. Um, but it's, it's been so fun. We, we discuss the gospel reading of the day. We, we find out what it is. We go upstairs, and since you all read it down here, we read it up there. Uh, sometimes we try to find where the story is in other chapters to compare how they uh, stack up and what the difference in the details are. And then other times it divulges into side tangents and thoughts about if, if God is in multiple galaxies and 
Old Testament versus New Testament. And it, it is always uh, enlightening and awesome to see their perspectives and how they think about it. And I get as much out of it as I hope they, they do. Um, we started a tradition. Um, Debbie, can you take one to Miss Kathy? Oh, I don't think she did. Oh, great. Okay. They can walk again. Um, you should know that this, that as much as I'm standing here, there are four administrators of the um, Sunday of the Sunday school class. I, I just usually am the face. I'm also the one that takes the minutes and does the notes. But um, Doug and Annette Reynolds and um, Lisa Grace and I. So the four of us are are all administrators and resources for anything. If, if you're at all interested in joining us, it, it, it is a growth thing for each of us as much as it is uh, sharing with the kids. Right, Kathy? <laughs> um, so I, I want to thank the teachers. I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank God. I want to thank God that we have persevered through the last several years. There are so many churches when I go on my safe sanctuary Zoom meetings that have no Sunday school, there are Sunday school left and did not come back after the pandemic. We are blessed to have who we have. And, and we are happy to, to continue to try to grow this Sunday school. So I, I give God the glory that we are still a united front. Um, I, I want to thank uh, all of the adult Bible study leaders, you know, Cliff and Marilyn, Pastor Sandy and Peter, um, working very hard at educating or at least keeping our minds thinking, focused on God. I want to thank our wonderful choir every week. That yeah. give us I, I have to add Rachel to the list. I understand she's a uh, adult Bible study sub. Good job, Rachel. I want to thank our music director, Dawn, who's been a wonderful gift. Her voice is amazing. I love, I love to hear her sing. Um, I want to thank the acolytes. Debbie, did you want to? Where did Debbie go? I wanted to um, thank the acolytes. Um, so does Debbie want to thank the acolyte? But Debbie is often an acolyte, so we have to thank her. <laughs> uh, and it was great, as I said in the praise, that it's great to have the, some youth acolyting again today, and I hope maybe we can get back into that habit. I want to thank the AV crew and Cliff, who, who do amazing things every week, and we really appreciate what they show us on the wall. Um, I want to thank Tony Capozzi. I know he's not here, but oh my gosh, what would we do without Tony? So, so you, need, you need to know that your teachers also, I mean, they're here Sunday and do the Sunday school thing. They also organize breakfast runs. And this year we also hope to get the youth back involved with our breakfast runs church breakfast that we do twice a year, once on rally day, and usually the epiphany breakfast sometime in January. They, they help the kids make, and this year the whole congregation made Valentine's, and they make sure that they get delivered appropriately for people to be uplifted by our Valentine's. They do the Easter egg hunt. Um, thank you, Yvonne. Uh, she helps with the uh, symbolic egg hunt that the kids do, going through different symbols of Easter. And then we also do the one with the candy, <laughs> that the kids find the eggs and, and have a good time. We, we run trim -a tree we organize the Christmas pageant, usually somebody in um, the youth will do the Christmas pageant and the live nativity that we start, that Annette has started recently. These are all things that are run by your Sunday school teachers. So they really are an amazing, amazing group of people. Um, the last, and, 
And the last group to um, thank are all of you parents and grandparents who bring your kids to us. We know they don't drive. We're glad they don't drive. So they have to get here somehow, and we are glad that you bring them. Thank you very much. So I, I think next we're going to um, bless all of our graduates. Yeah. Yeah. I can put it back for you. Oh, Debbie was going to go. Oh, Debbie came up. She has to go. Okay. Yeah, you come. While she's coming up, I also want to echo everything she said. And choir members and um, teachers, I have something for you. And so, after. It's okay. It's okay. Good morning, and I just wanted to, I'll be really brief, but I just wanted to say, um, first of all, I was really relieved that you guys had heard and studied the mustard seed parable, because there's lots of times we need faith in scary situations, in unknown situations, and this is one of the scariest situations for me, is to have to stand up here, so it took me a few seats to get here today. But I just want to thank you all, bell ringers and newest two acolytes, for the great job that you do in getting the service started. And uh, really appreciate your help. And I hope that you will be, your example will be seeds for the next ones coming up. So just come on up when I call your name. Sorry, you want you to fall. Oh. <laughs> it's not bad. So I know you're a little old for this, but I well, just want to acknowledge you. Too. And Charles Horton. Where did Kathy go? Oh, come on up here, please. <laughs> We're not like gonna, gonna let you get away that quickly and that easily. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> this is from all the teachers. Without Kathy here, 
we wouldn't be able to do what we do because she has really taken over the administrative responsibilities and help help guide us in what our real passion is. And our, obviously, our passion is for the for the young uh, the young youth and children of this church. So, without her steadfast love, care, and support, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now. So, thank you. And just Sarah is probably listening in. I visited with her on Friday. She wishes she could be here, but she is on the men. She had major shoulder surgery last month. And now last but not least, I would like to announce our graduates. And I know you've been up here at least twice, but three times is good too. So. Um, if uh, Xavier, it, fifth and sixth grade, we have Xavier King, Colleen Gutowski, who's in Belize, and Jatasia. Could you all come up here? And then, you're, you're not you yet, you did graduate, sorry. Maybe, <laughs> Logan, Logan Reynolds, eighth grade. Okay, you know what, JD, you can come up too and get a prayer, he can come. It's all good, you graduated from another grade. Sure, come on up. Okay, fine, okay. <laughs> Um, we have Phoebe, graduating from high school, um, and Christopher Menino, and Michael Antonucci. From college, we have Emily Grace from Manhattan College, James Pinto from University of Albany, Victoria Mandaro, Fran Madelone's granddaughter from Lehman College, and Julie Laura Jacobson, June Willis' granddaughter from Messiah. So I'm going to say a little prayer for all of you, and we're also going to ask that you mission um, folks could stand. We're gonna give you a full prayer next week. Anybody going on a mission trip this summer? Do you know who you are? Okay, let us pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, we just thank you for these young people who have graduated and, and had just done all the work. And Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will bless them, anoint them, protect them, and guide them as they walk with you. We're so proud of them and their achievements and let them know that um, no matter what grade they are in, that we, their church family supports them and is there for them. Lord, we pray for all of them who are going on the mission trip and all the leaders and continue to bless our young people as they are not only our future, but our present. We thank you for all of them and surround them with your love and peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, congratulations for graduating. Oh, they wrote it wrong. Xavier Payne. Take note his <laughs> Okay, grandmother's name. Great grandma. Okay. Go tell that lady in the back. In the white that she's the boss of this. <laughs> well, Xavier, we love you. He wants to say something. Well, I just want to thank all of you for like being here since I've been here and like yeah, that's about it. But also, thank you to Teresa for being my first ever Sunday school teacher. I probably wouldn't be standing here right now if it weren't for you. Thank you. He doesn't like my step either, but anyway. <laughs> well, thank you. That was just beautiful, and I, it's just such a privilege to serve. Um, you're all so loving and and the children are just so blessed because of all of you and everyone here also. And now I invite the ushers forward for a collection as we listen to this beautiful anthem, 10,000 Reasons. If you know this, you're more than welcome to sing along.
Gracious and heavenly God, we praise you for this wonderful day. And Lord, we ask that you will bless these gifts that we lovingly give to you. May you use them for your honor and glory. Amen. Amen. And just a reminder, I, in the back, um, Debbie has the VBS sign up. So if you can take some, we'll give some to you during, you know, they'll be available during the picnic. You're all invited, please stay before the benediction. I will say a blessing on the food we're about to receive. Now our final hymn is This Little Light of Mine, and we have a traditional way, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, but it's gonna be wonderful. So may we let our light shine too, so. So now our final hymn, This Little Light of Mine. the food and then I invite you to join me as I continue on to the benediction. Holy and merciful God, we thank you for this day and as we go forth from this place, many of us will be traveling this summer, but no matter where we go, whether it's in our neighborhoods, our communities, even in our homes, may we let our light shine. And bless the food, Lord, we are about to receive and thank you for the hands preparing it. May our time of joy and celebration give honor to your glory, and thank you for everyone here, and thank you for your love. And now for the benediction. Feel the love of God growing within your heart. Go into God's world, planting seeds of love, mercy, joy, and all, and all that we say and do. Be at peace and serve God. Amen.